Hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk. Um, quick introduction for myself and uh, Kian, my partner in this talk. My name is Mohamed Zayan. I work as a senior systems engineer at uh, um, New Work SE, the company behind Xing, Kununu, and Olify. If you are in Germany or in the Dach area in Europe, you might be familiar with this. And uh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, it's very glad to, to share the, uh, we, what our topic is how to deploy an AI Kubernetes cluster with Kubespray. This is my partner, Mohammed, and my name is Kay. I'm from the Docker. I'm a principal engineer. And uh, in my career, I have deployed hundreds of Kubernetes. So this is agenda. The first part is we will, we will introduce what is Kubespray and what's the main features of Kubespray and the best practice. And then uh, we will share how to build an uh, AI organized uh, cluster. And then there is a demo, uh, uh, share our community. And the last is the Q&A. So what is Kubespray? Kubespray is the subject, uh, is a Kubernetes deploy tool. It's a sub-project of Kubernetes lifecycle cluster, uh, cluster lifecycle management. And uh, it's totally based on Ansible. Actually, it's a collection of Ansible. So uh, there are uh, many projects in the cluster lifecycle management, such as Kubernetes, QuayOps, Cluster API, and uh, Kubespray. Kubespray is very good at to deploy experimental clusters, and it can use for production-ready environment. And if you are using public cloud, the management of Kubernetes is uh, very good, such as EKS or uh, AR, AKS or something. If you just want to develop uh, kind of is a good choice. And if you want to, you, uh, pro to do some production ready, Kubespray is very good. Then, so um, the main features of uh, Kubespray, as we say, it can be used with several cloud environments. You can use Terraform to provision your cluster and then use Kubespray with the Ansible stuff to configure and provision your cluster. And uh, yeah, it's flexible because we will explain this in the next slide also, how can you use it and what are the supported providers, whether if it's a public cloud or you know, on per metal or it's a, your private cloud or something. Yeah, it uh, uh, can provide a high availability cluster because you can uh, uh, have a clustered control plane, also HCD and uh, other things where you can, which you can deploy from the uh, using Kubespray. And you have many configuration options. So if it's a container runtime interface, we support container D, cryo, lots of other stuff for CNI also, we will explain this. And it is also supporting most popular Linux distributions. In the next uh, slide, we will show this. Yeah, and it has continuous, continuous integration tests for all this. Um, configuration options and softwares which you can use from within Kubespray. Yeah, you see here? Yeah, you can use Kubespray to uh, provision, deploy your clusters and cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, Equinix, Huawei, AppCloud. And if you are hosting your own VMware, vSphere environment, you can also do this. OpenStack, Hetzna, NetCloud, the supported operating uh, operating systems are, as you see, uh, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alma, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Amazon Linux, Kylin, and I think uh, Kay can talk about this later. Um, yeah, the, see, um, the container runtimes inter interface, we options, we have ContainerD, Docker, Cryo, Yuki, Kata, lots of stuff for the, uh, for the CNI, we have Calico, Cilium, we have plugins like Mac VLAN, we have Multus, Flannel, Weave, Kernel, and uh, Cube OVN. For the CSI, we support uh, some plugins. You can see in the slide, we support uh, the, the AWS EBS, also the vSphere, and also Ceps. And also, you can use Kubespray to deploy codiness when you create a cluster. You can also toggle on and off to deploy Ingress Engine X if you want to deploy it from Kubespray. Also, cert manager softwares like Argo CD or Helm. Yeah, we have the basic 
the Docker uh, registry software. Also, the, recently we added the new feature discovery. So Kubespray is flexible with all this. You don't have all this by default, of course. It's configurable. It's up to you to choose whatever you need within your cluster when you uh, start using Kubespray. Yeah, uh, the, this is the life cycle cluster operations of Kubespray. You can create a new cluster. You can upgrade clusters with zero downtime, a control plane component, like if you want to uh, go up with your Kubernetes version, for example, or some con components, like uh, if you also want to upgrade etcd alone because there's some CVEs fixes or some stuff, you can do this with Kubespray, specifically Ansible, the power of tags and tasks. And you can also live scale your cluster, you can add or remove nodes, you can reset a cluster, you can do several configuration management if you want to add some configurations to your Kubelet configuration or your uh, Kube, uh, API server or control uh, controller manager or something, you can do all this with Kubespray. And yeah, we do, uh, we support uh, uh, performing etcd snapshots and backups during the upgrade just to make it safe during an upgrade and uh, yeah. Yeah, here are the release cycle. These are the current supported versions of Kubespray. We also do this uh, semantic releases if there's fixes or something or some releases for major components like Kubernetes software itself or ContainerD or Calico, the most used stuff in Kubespray. And yeah, we sometimes, because we think like, like there are bug fixes or security fixes, we just do this releases and this is the current releases which you can use. Uh, this this is the we, we can use Kubernetes to deploy in the public cloud. The, besides Kubernetes is a very good uh, solution for environmental environment plant, and it's also very good for the cloud environment. We can use Terraform to create the virtual machine in the public cloud. There are lots of te uh, Terraform script in the Kubernetes. This shows the steps. The step one is to create a VM and a net with Terraform with this command. Uh, Terraform init and Terraform apply. And then uh, after that, the machines and the net has been set uh, in the public cloud. And then we can install it with uh, Kubernetes with Ansible, use this command, the uh, Ansible playbook. And we are now support the AWS and the Go Cloud and such things uh, published called public cloud in the Kubernetes. And the Kubernetes is also very good for air gap in, uh, deployment environment. Uh, uh, we, uh, we do a lot of work, work to do that. We declare all the uh, image and the binary files uh, in, in the Kubernetes script. So we can run, run, uh, run we can create a machine as a, as a download machine. It can uh, generate a, a list of image and the files and then download it from the internet. And then we can package them. The package is uh, about uh, three, three megabytes. And then we can copy it into the, insta uh, in into, into the air gap environment. Then we can use the machine as an uh, antibody, then create a, create a cluster with, uh, with it. And another thing is that the Kubernetes do not do anything about the operation system. So we should use a, D a DVD. Uh, uh, about the operation system's repo, so it can be work. Uh, another thing to notice that the Docker CE is a special case because its dependency is a little uh, complex, so uh, we should do it memory. And then the Kubernetes has also lots of CI tests. When uh, any uh, P, uh, pull request has been submitted to the Kubernetes, the, we should pass about uh, 40 test cases, about, uh, about 13 operating systems and other things we should do to uh, make tests. And uh, uh, it's about, uh, the whole test needs about an hour. Yeah, it's a, a very amazing thing. So uh, that's, that's why uh, we keep the, uh, the Kubernetes can keep the co uh, quality of the project. 
Then uh, I will introduce some best practice of Cooper Spray. Uh, one is the NTP. We know in the offline experimental environment, the time sync is very important because of the ETCD and the Kubernetes control plan needs to uh, sync time. So we can declare the, uh, the, these things in, in the Cooper Spray and it can sync time automatically for the for Vim. And as a, as a production ready environment, we should use CC, uh, it, it, uh, Spray support use uh, CCTR to organize the operating system to make the, the, the workload more healthy, such as the PID and the FD can be increased. Another thing is the high availability. Uh, the Kubernetes can be easily to install a high availability uh, Kubernetes cluster. It has multi-control plan. And the multi uh, there are, I think there are uh, two interesting things. One is that uh, the Kubernetes can use uh, NGX or uh, HA proxy to, prox to proxy the API server so that it can make the control plan uh, HA, uh, to, for the Kubernetes. And then we can use Kubernetes VIP or external LB to support the API servers uh, for the uh, Kubernetes CTR. And another thing is that uh, uh, the, well, the, the third of the Kubernetes will be ex expired one year, so we have a, a script to auto renew it every month. Uh, recently, well, we have uh, we have a new feature about Ansible connection. Uh, Ansible connection is, uh, is a dependency tool for Ansible. So uh, we, 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 uh, we can declare it in, uh, uh, it can be uh, cooperate with other Ansible collections. So we can easily declare it in the Ansible collections the requirement YAML file with this, with this style and then we can use Ansible Galaxy to install the course array so it can be used as normally. The next thing is uh, cluster hardening. So uh, uh, to, be, to make a cluster more, secre more security, so we can use it easily with some configs to make the cluster. Uh, the, for example, the organization and the, the, the request timeout and the audit, that's uh, very important. Uh, we have a, a document in the, in the GitHub repo. So uh, from the keynote of the uh, Kubercom, we can see more and more AI workload are uh, working on the Kubernetes. This is the uh, screenshot from the OpenAI. So see, uh, she says, why Kubernetes? Uh, we are excited with the, uh, scheduling and the introspection and scalability of the uh, Kubernetes. So uh, next, I will introduce the how to make a um, the Kubernetes more AI organized. Um, as the OAI environment, I think the architecture is uh, the uh, we need the Kubernetes is run on the CPU and the GPU machines, and the only on this is the design system or AI machine learning tools, and on the top is the modes and the LLM. The AI workload is highly different from the web application workload. Their work, uh, workload is often batch and then the web application are interactive. So it uh, makes the challenge of the Cooper Spray. Uh, some, of, uh, some of us may know that the Cooper Spray's uh, GPU uh, have, have been developed for, uh, four years ago. It's a little outdated. It only supports the device plugin, and it can install the drivers from the binary, uh, but the, uh, it's uh, hard to maintain. And there, uh, the, it lack of the Prometheus exporter, and the lack of node feature discover, and the lack of MIG, uh, RDMA, and uh, such things. The new GPU features is do not support by Cooper Spray. And the Cooper Spray is only support the default uh, scheduler, Kubernetes scheduler, and do not support the gun scaling, the capacity scaling, and the priority scaling. It's not, not support. And it's also lack of the AI applications. So uh, personally, the, this picture is my understanding of uh, AI optimized Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we can we can look it from the button to the top. The button is the infrastructure. 
and uh, we sh the group strategy should uh, to enhance the platform script to enable the, the GPU create from the public cloud. And in the Kubernetes, uh, we should to support more uh, GPU features such as MIG and uh, even DRA. And uh, on the bottom of it, we should, uh, the GPU is supposed to be by ConnectD and uh, other things. And on the top of it, uh, the Kubernetes, we should uh, uh, support the a, uh, scheduler for AI batch job and the queue. On the top of that is the AI framework such as PyTouch or Hugging Face or Ray or something, Kubernetes. But uh, this is not part of the Kubernetes for Kubernetes, uh, it's, it's on the, it's, it's like applications. So uh, let me introduce the NVIDIA GPU integration. The, we want to use GPU operator to install the G, uh, NVIDIA GPU integration. There are two parts of them. One part is host level component. Another part is Kubernetes uh, level component. Uh, there are uh, NVIDIA container toolkit to uh, in the host level component. This tool is useful to make the container D to support the GPU or the Docker or the CRAO. And then we can use the GPU driver. It's, uh, it's officially uh, uh, NVIDIA image. It can be installed in many operating system. And then on top, uh, with this, the uh, Kubernetes can support the GPU. And this is the high level component of, of the uh, GPU operator. Such as device plugin for plugin uh, for for scheduling, the feature discovery is able to uh, get the information about the GPU card and label it to the node, and the MIG is very useful for GPU sharing, and the exporter is useful for monitoring, and that's that's all for GPU uh, operator. Uh, there are many sessions by Nvidia in this KubeCon. I think if we are interested with that, we can we can go to join them. This is the uh, uh, basic uses of all usage of GPU. Uh, this is the pod. We can uh, uh, we can use it as a, a coda image, and then we can use the resource limit uh, GPU two. It can be scheduled to the, with the GPU plugin, and we so we can also declare the uh, node selector uh, as the GPU type, so it can be labeled with the uh, with the this is the label labeled with the feature discovery. So the port can be can be scheduled to the right machine, and this is the uh, GPU advanced usage. Besides the basic usage, uh, we can use MIG. MIG can make multi port use one GPU. Uh, it's very useful when we have a multi user in a cluster. And um, Kubernetes is a solution to build a virtual machine on the Kubernetes. And with the GPU operator, uh, the Kubernetes machine can use a virtual device of GPU. And with the this exporter, we can create a dashboard from Grafana, and we can monitor in the GPU. There are a lot of future work about the GPU, such as DIA and RDMA. Uh, DIA, uh, uh, from the, the keynote is the galaxy of the, the GPU. And uh, we, I have tried, but I think it, it's still in de, uh, develop, uh, developing. So we will uh, implement after the other uh, the basic things are do. And then uh, if we, uh, and the GPU direct, the RDMA can make the AI workload run faster uh, in a GPU environment. So it's all the GPU theme. And the next is uh, why the schedule is important for AI workload. Uh, AI workload is very different from the web workload. So uh, it's heavy, like, like, like a highway. So the job is built by Ray or Kubernetes below will be joined to a queue. And the queue is waiting in a queue. And then it will be uh, uh, scheduled by the Kubernetes scheduler. And finally, it will be run in a node as a pod. So, uh, AI workload often require a large amount of computer resource, so the Kubernetes scheduler can uh, make all the things be effectively. Then, if the job is distributed, so we, we need to use gun scheduling. And next, uh, if, uh, if uh, because GPU is very expensive, so the environment are usually uh, used by the uh, multi-tenant, 
are in the multi-tenant environment, the priority queue is very important. So we can make the um, high priority uh, job be run the first. So that's why the queue is important. Then uh, let me describe the gun scaling. Uh, why, uh, why the gun scaling is useful? Because in the distributed uh, AI job, all the jobs should be run together at the same time because uh, they should community, communicate each other and uh, uh, never, uh, any of them be lost. The AI job cannot be run good. So we should combine all the jobs into a pod group and the pod group should be scheduled by a Kubernetes scheduler. The Kubernetes scheduler will watch whether the resource is enough. If the resource is enough to run, to run all of the job, it will allocate them at the same time to the, to the right nodes. If the resource is not enough, nothing will do nothing. That's, that's the gun scheduling. So to implement the gun scheduling, we can choose scheduler plugin of kernel. There are, there are two choose is, is, uh, is uh, all good. Uh, uh, scheduler, uh, scheduler plugin is uh, a upstream project from the Kubernetes SIG, and uh, the, the Volcano is a CNCF project, is a good choice. To, to use a uh, uh, scheduler plugin, we can use the, this YAML file. We can, we can see the, the, we, de, uh, we defined a port group uh, called name NGX, and we, de, uh, we defined a replica set using the uh, scheduler name to specify the scheduler plugin, and then use the label to using the pod group. That's, that's uh, how to use the scheduler plugin. And the scheduler plugin can also be installed at the home into the group spray. This, this is uh, all the features of scheduler plugin, such as gun scheduling and pin pack and uh, other things. Uh, uh, it's very useful. And another thing is Q. Uh, uh, Q is, uh, uh, is very useful. This is uh, uh, also your upstream project named KQ. It's a Kubernetes native job Q system. It, uh, it can be integrated with Ray or Kubernetes or other things. And, and it can be in, uh, uh, integrated with them, such as Ray job can be, can be put into a Q. So the Q can can do some resource quota management of it. And it can also do some uh, priority work or consuming work. So that's, uh, that's what we can do next. There is a discuss about a Herm and Ansible template because Kubernetes is a long history project. All our applications are implemented by Ansible template. Uh, it's very, it's become a very huge. M many people want to add uh, new add-ons into it. So uh, there is a discussion about whether we should use Herm to instead of uh, Ansible. I think it's, uh, it's a very good idea um, uh, because Herm is man uh, can, can reduce the mental load and uh, it's more clear. But there are many features are implemented by Ansible already. Are ma so Megrite means brick change. And uh, Ansible ha also uh, has some benefits because it can be ready for air gap environment, but Ham is a uh, little uh, hard to do that. So uh, my answer is that uh, Cooper's Ray should uh, uh, use the Herm and Ansible to uh, together, both. The Ansible is better for system component and the Herm is better for applications. So I think the uh, GPU or AI uh, uh, features would be implemented by Herm. Then is the demo. Uh, where is my mouse? Okay. okay. So we can install the Kubernetes with Git Chrome. So it takes a minute and uh, it's be installed. Then we can configure it. This is a simple example. We have three nodes. And one of these GPU, one control plan, three worker plan. Then we can use a config file to, to edit, to enable the feature. We, we can see there are GPU and the Herm and other thing. Then we close the firewall. And the next, we apply it. So we can see the Ansible is working automatically for them. It takes a lot of time. 
uh, now he, it is a per install or something in the operating system and do some per check, uh, disable a swap and so on. That it takes a lot, a lot of time. Because my network is not, uh, is, is slow. If we, we want to accelerate it, we can use the offline package to install a, a cluster. It may take about 10 minutes. Okay, uh, it will, will install. So the, the, uh, the cluster has been installed. Then we can, we can use it. It's ready. Then we can see the, uh, the all the things is ready, such as Calico and the DS. Then the GPU operator is working. Now he, it is uh, installed in the uh, NVIDIA GPU driver because we, the GPU driver should be compared into the machine. So it also takes a lot of time. It's comparing. And, uh, and finally, it will be OK. Then I create a CODA sample, sample, sample application. So it will be wrong and pull the image. And it, finally, it would be success. OK. That's the demo. Um, yes, thanks, Kay, for the um, um, information about uh, the AI stuff with CubeSpray. And uh, yeah, from our place here, we would like to thanks to the community. Um, yeah, we had 1,082 developers and more than 50 in a single release. We have 7,500. 36 comets. We welcomed new contributors last year. I think they are just mentioned by the GitHub usernames, and we still welcome um, more contributors. We, we, we encourage you, if you use CubeSpray, also to support the project. I actually wanted to ask this question in the beginning. Um, who's using CubeSpray here? Wow, that's impressive. And of course, I would uh, uh, expect that it's in production, so it's a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Um, yeah, um, you need our help. You need to discuss an idea. You want to introduce um, a new feature. You want to make a change. You want to do whatever kind of contribution. Please, uh, yeah, as uh, Alexander Dumas said, on Porto, I'm not good in, uh, in French. It was by K, this code. But yeah, we are in Copernetus Slack. And the, we have the CubeSpray channel for general support where lots of, lots of CubeSpray uh, users are there to ask questions or to ask questions. And also we are there to support um, people. You can also uh, create issues in the GitHub project. And if you're interested in topics or questions or things about CubeSpray development, please also join the other channel, CubeSpray-dev. And yeah, here also the uh, the path for the uh, GitHub project, CubeSpray um, 6 slash uh, Kubernetes 6 slash CubeSpray. And we are also available um, here at uh, Project Pavilion at Kiosk PP 19 B. So, yes, I think we uh, wanted to induce a round of. Uh, questions and answers. So please, if you have questions, there are two microphones here. Please just. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, please. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for uh, the talk. I learned a lot. And I have a question. Um, you touched on the topic of Kubesk. Spray release Can you get cycle. closer to the microphone, please? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, you touched on the topic of Cube Spray release cycle, and I was curious to whether it aligns with the Kubernetes core release cycle. And if that's the case, how do you ensure that you remain up to date and not fall behind? I think I can answer this question. Yeah, so it's uh, like um, 
voluntarily uh, contribution and we as a maintainers because also we discuss these things before we make a release because in theory you can use the master branch but use it at your own risk because it might have some uh, something which is not working you can support the project with testing it but normally before every release we check all the release we build the draft and we check if we have something missing from the core components or not. A core component, of course, here would be the Kubernetes version. So we check if we have an upcoming release or we have a, like the most recent stable. In every, which with every release with KubeSpray, we support three Kubernetes releases with like one uh, really very stable, like with like uh, five versions or something. And yeah, we don't release KubeSpray before checking like stuff like etcd, Kubernetes and uh, Calico, many of the core components, which everyone I think is using when you run KubeSpray. And uh, one other thing also that, uh, ah, sorry, I forgot I wanted to, to, to say something. Yeah, we also with this core components in KubeSpray, we check the compatibility metrics. So what Kubernetes Kubernetes is using, like, uh, of course, core S or a specific etcd version, we just follow this. We don't increase uh, the versions, like not stable versions or something. We just follow the recommendation by Kubernetes. Okay, that's why it's this hard, right? But uh, are you on bar with the release cycle of the core itself, or do you need to lag behind a little bit until you make sure that every other project yeah, is Yeah, we are trying stable. to do that. Yeah, if, if I go back to the slide of... Uh, releases i think we could uh, show oops sorry the first one yes yeah. Well, well, so. uh, yeah, can you yeah you can see here that we um, with the latest release we support uh, uh, kubernetes 128 with the upcoming release which will be soon we will be supporting 129 and yeah, we do releases like every six weeks or eight weeks maximum. So this is how it works with uh, how we do. But also, as you see, we have a release 2.23.3 because we had to release some uh, fixes or some, something was introduced and it was mandatory to, to release to, to the users of KubeSpray. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, I'm around here if you have uh, uh, questions again, and uh, thank you. Uh, Kay? Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome to Pentagas. Yeah.